Hello everyone and welcome to this session on Amazon EFS. AWS offers a wide range of storage services that can be provisioned depending on your project requirements and use cases. Amazon EFS or Elastic File System falls under the file storage category. EFS is a file level fully managed storage provided by AWS that can be accessed by multiple EC2 instances concurrently. In this session, you will get an overview of what is Amazon EFS. So without further ado, let us start the session. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get latest updates from IntelliVal. The agenda for today's video will be the following topics. Firstly, I'll be introducing about file systems. Next, I'll move on to how to use EFS. Next, I'll be comparing EFS, EBS and S3. These are services offered by AWS. Finally, I'll be talking about some of the use cases of EFS and how they are used in real world applications. Now, without further ado, let us move ahead with the video. Introduction to file systems. File systems are the standards for organizing data on storage devices. These standards essentially define how these files are named, how these files are stored and how they are retrieved from a storage device. Every time you open a file on your computer or smart device, your operating system uses its file system internally to load it from the storage device. Or when you copy, edit or delete a file, the file system handles it under the hood. Whenever you download a file or access a web page over the internet, a file system is involved. For instance, if you access a page on IntelliPad.com, your browser sends an HTTP request to IntelliPad server to fetch that particular page. If the request resource is a file, it is fetched from a file system on that particular server. So here are a few of the common file systems or standards that are widely used. First, we have FAT32. This file system was used widely due to its compatibility with various operating systems and it is still used in external storage devices due to this very reason. NTFS is targeted at Windows PC users. It was an upgrade from FAT32, but the downside is that it is not compatible with non-Windows operating system. XFAT is a file system that is optimized for high capacity USB flash drives and memory cards. It is a default file system for SD cards. EXT4 is the default file system for Linux based operating systems. APFS became the default file system for Mac operating systems. A network file system or NFS is a type of file system mechanism that enables the storage and retrieval of data from multiple disks and directories across a shared network. An NFS system enables local users to access remote data and files in the same way that they are accessed locally. A particular version of the NFS uh, NFS is a standard and uh, there is a version uh, for it which is NFS version 4 or NFS v4 and this is used as the industry standard for the Amazon EFS service. So in the image below we have the NFS architecture which is not really important here. All you need to know is that NFS version 4 is used in the Amazon EFS service. How to use EFS? Amazon EFS is a fully managed service. So all of the file storage infrastructure is managed for you by Amazon. When you use Amazon EFS, you avoid the complexity of deploying and maintaining complex file system infrastructure. An Amazon EFS file system grows and shrinks automatically as you add and remove files. So you don't need to manage uh, storage uh, provisioning or storage procurement. Now below is a diagram uh, that simply illustrates the different stages involved in uh, deploying a uh, file system. Firstly, you need to create your uh, file system using the EC2 launch instance wizard. You can also do that with the EFS console, the command line interface or APIs if you like uh, using a programming language of your choice. So we have the all these various uh, different ways of uh, setting up your elastic file system. And in this stage, uh, you can also choose your performance and throughput modes. This performance and throughput modes basically states how much performance and uh, how much uh, throughput that is uh, the input output operations IOPS uh, that you need per second. And the next stage is mounting your uh, file system on EC2 or the AWS containers which can be deployed using AWS ECS, EKS and Fargate. And you can also mount your file system on Lambda functions. And finally, you can uh, mount your EFS on on-premises service that is bare metal service, which is located inside a company. And the third stage is to test and optimize the your infrastructure. So you put in test data here and uh, 
see how it works initially if you need more throughput you can uh, increase that using the throughput mode if you need more iops performance you can also do that uh, using the performance mode and after doing all that uh, so after optimizing your whole infrastructure the next stage is moving in your initial data so you move your data to your file from cloud or on premises and you can do that using aws data sync or various protocols using the aws transfer family AWS uh, transfer family is a feature provided by AWS which basically helps you uh, transfer all your files smoothly and the last step is to share and further protect your data you can share your file data optimize your cost with EFS lifecycle management which is another uh, feature by EFS so uh, in this feature you can uh, choose your lifecycle of your data the lifecycle ranges from 7 days 15 days 30 days 60 days up to 90 days So once this time period, the uh, set time period is over, your data gets uh, deleted, and you can also protect your data with AWS Backup and EFS replication. EFS versus EBS versus S3. So at the first glance, these three services seem to be identical to each other. But let us know each uh, services very briefly. Amazon EFS is a file storage service for use with Amazon Compute and on-premises services. Amazon compute services here refer to the EC2 instances the containers and serverless EFS provides a file system interface file system access semantics and concurrently accessible storage for up to thousands of EC2 instances so it is scalable Amazon elastic block storage is a block level storage service for use with Amazon EC2 Amazon EBS can deliver performance for workloads that require the lowest latency access to data from a single EC2 instance Amazon Simple Storage Service or S3 is an object storage service. Amazon S3 makes data available through an internet API that can be accessed anywhere. Moving on to the use cases of EFS, it can be used to simplify DevOps. It can basically share your code and other files in a secure organized way to increase DevOps agility and respond faster to customer feedback. It can modernize application development or app development. persist and share data from your aws containers and serverless applications with zero management required so basically aws efs manages all of your uh, app development stages so that you can concentrate only on the code efs is used to enhance content management system it helps you simplify persistent storage for modern content management systems or also known as cms you can get your products and services to market faster more reliably and securely at a very low cost EFS is also used to accelerate uh, data science workloads. It is easy to use and scale. Amazon EFS also offers the performance and consistency needed for machine learning and big data analytics workloads. Thank you for watching till the end guys. Have a nice day. Now that we are done with the session, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Intellibab. Just a quick info guys if you want to make a career in cloud and devops then intellipad provides an advanced certification in cloud computing and devops by enict academy iit roorkee and it is taught by iit roorkee professors and industry experts this course is designed to upskill and land your dream job